Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So it's that time of year again. I am planning for Thanksgiving. So we have just finalized our guest list. We are going to be having 12 people. I'm trying to keep it easy this year because I have some big news that has been keeping me very busy. Are you ready for this? I'm writing a cookbook, yay! Finally, after 10 years, I'm so excited. I waited a long time because I really wanted the right publisher to understand the concept that I wanted to do and they totally get it and I'm very excited to be working with them. And the concept is entertaining 101, 101 recipes that everybody should know how to make. So if you wanna keep up with the process of the cookbook and how it's all coming together, and also be the first to be notified when it's available for sale, just subscribe to my newsletter. The link is below, and in there, I'll be showing some behind the scenes footage of some of my recipe testing, give you some behind the scenes of the photo shoot, which we're gonna be doing this spring, and just some other good stuff in there. So if you're not already subscribed, be sure to subscribe and you can keep up with it. Okay, so I have this little seating area here, which uh, only seats eight people. Now we could squeeze maybe four around this area. Um, the only thing is it does get a little tight. There is an awning that could shade it. And then this area is sort of like baking in the sun. Plus we like to sort of have this area for drinks because I think this is a good place for people to kind of conjugate around. I think I have to maybe get rid of the soccer goal. <laughs> um, so I don't know, this is an option. We'll think about that. Now, the other option is the vegetable garden. And if you followed my Thanksgiving prep from last year, that's where we had it. If you didn't see that, I'll leave a link in the description and you can get caught up. The problem with that space though, is that it gets really sunny around noon and then I have to rent two umbrellas. I did that last year, but to be honest, it was a little pricey and uh, it didn't really shade that much. So then we ended up coming back here for dessert. So it's beautiful out here, but you can see how it's starting to get really sunny. The other thing is, um, sorry, we have some work going on with our plumbing. I feel like every time we have a big party that I'm preparing for, there's like work going on at the house. <laughs> we had some pipe issues that had to be replaced and then I had to replace my dishwasher. So luckily we caught it in time before Thanksgiving because that would have been a bigger mess. But anyway, you can see the garden here does not look so good. It never really looks great in the fall, but like I have to pull out these poor tomato plants. Look at this, it's all a mess. Uh, so if I decide to have it out here, I'm gonna have to clean up this garden, which I think is a whole other load of work. So in the spirit of keeping it easy, I had another idea. Let me show you. <laughs> it's sort of inspired by the big party that we had for my husband's 60th birthday party. So if you remember that party, I had it right here in between these two structures. And it really worked out great once I figured out how to orient the tables. That was kind of a funny nightmare, but I think it worked out great. And if you haven't seen that video, I'll link to it below. But I was thinking, why not have Thanksgiving here? We're only 12, so it wouldn't be as many tables. And I actually think I have two folding tables with cloths that I could put here. So I really don't want to get into the expense again of renting all those tables and chairs because that did add up a bit. And because I waited so long to figure this out because I've just been busy with the cookbook and all the planning and the testing, that I think I waited too long to rent. So I don't even know if I'd be able to rent. So we're going to get creative and we're going to see if I can pull it together with things that I already own. I mean, that's always step number one, right? <laughs> Use what you already have. All right, let's take a look. the idea of one long table because I just think it's a little bit more fun. These are just these long folding tables. They're six feet long. I buy them at Home Depot for like $50 and they're great. I've had these for years. You can tell my kids when they were little, they used to come out here and paint on these tables, <laughs> but that's okay because I have a cloth and we're going to cover all of that unsightliness. I have two of each of these cloths. Last year I used this one. Both of these have been designed by my dad. I love them, they're umbrella. What's great about them is they're cloths that go to the floor. They're gonna hide all of those unsightly legs there. But I think I'm gonna have to go with this color because I think it matches the chairs better than that. So let's go see. See, these chairs are this really nice kind of Luxembourg green, which I think just works better with that than the brown. The only thing is, I usually use this in the summer, so we're gonna have to fall it up a bit, which I think we can do concentrating on just the green and this little red, which I'm gonna turn more sort of in the brown tones, and we'll see. I'm a big fan of the try it before you buy it theory. So we're gonna try these cloths on, we're gonna see what they look like, 
and then I'll bring over just a few chairs. Let's just see. You don't want to work this all out on Thanksgiving Day. This should be done a full week ahead of time in my opinion. <laughs> I am gonna to have to get these dry cleaned because they are looking a little wrinkly and they're really hard to iron. So I think I might just leave it to the professionals. <laughs> Not too shabby once they're ironed. Oh, that's not so bad. All right, let's get another. Okay. The only thing is, I don't have enough of those little lattice chairs, so I brought this thing in because I do have a few of those in the garage, but they just looked a little bit out of place. I don't really think those were working. Yeah, actually, I think this works better. These are our dining room table chairs, and I have to clear them anyway because we're gonna have our buffet, and I can't have the chairs around the buffet. So what if I just alternate one of these lattice chairs and one of these little chairs, and then when they're all in there, I don't think it's gonna look that bad. I like the mix matched chairs. Sometimes I feel like it reminds me of those like um, Winnie the Pooh parties, you know, when they have a little birthday party and everybody brings their different looking chair. This whole thing has me wondering, could it rain? Look at those clouds. <laughs> and it's been raining here. This is my biggest fear for Thanksgiving. <laughs> rain. Oh no, I don't know what we will do if it rains like this. I've only had that happen once here in LA and we had to all cram in my living room. And now that we've got close to 12 people, I don't know if that's gonna work. So let's just pray for a sunny day. <laughs> So when I'm not in France shopping the Bracants, I like to come to my local Goodwill store because this is where you can find all kinds of great things for your table that don't cost a lot of money, but add a lot of personality. Okay, so let's go in and see what we can find. Ooh, that's a cute little tea set. Look at that. <laughs> I don't need one of those. What I'm really looking for is something to put flowers and berries and things in on my table. So I always love to go to the glass area because you never know what you'll find. I always look for interesting shapes. Like, look at that one. That's kind of cool. Okay. And then what I usually do is anything that catches my eye, I just like this. Look at this. This is kind of great. Look how contemporary that one is. I put it on the floor like that just as I'm looking so that you can kind of set it apart from everything else it's sitting next to. That allows you to really look at the shape. Ooh, I love this sort of light green glass. That's pretty. I think that would go with the tablecloths pretty well. Oh, look, there's two. Okay, I'll just add those to the staging area. Look at these. What are these for? And there's so many of them. <laughs> it's like the genie in the bottle. All right, and then once I have my semi-finalist pick, I then like to look at the prices, just to make sure I'm not going totally hog wild. Okay, everything seems to be reasonable. So now I'm gonna check down this aisle because I really would love, ooh, look at these little blue plates. Aren't those cute? Doesn't really go with the theme, so I'm going to put those back because they may be a find for somebody else, but those are kind of cool. I was looking for some coffee cups, but I don't really see just plain white coffee cups. So there's a lot of singletons. Um, I don't think that's gonna work. Okay, the other thing I need are some glasses for the bar. So ooh, look at these. I don't need these, but these are kind of cute. This is what I love about the Goodwill. You can always find these little like fancy champagne coupes, which are also great for ice cream or little desserts. But I'm looking for just some like tumbler type glasses. Uh, these look kind of interesting. Let's see, I like that with the bubble. Oh, they have a great weight to them too. They're really heavy. Those are kind of nice. Okay, those could be a contender. Uh, let's just see how many there are. Okay, oh, it looks like there's six. That's kind of great. And it looks like they come in a taller version as well. All right, so I will think about that. All right, and then there's one more aisle to do, but look at how cute those are. A little creamer and sugar, some silver bling for the table. All right, don't need any of that. I always love to go down this aisle because it's such a weird catch-all of things. Some baking dishes. Oh, a nice little silver-plated tray, maybe for some dinner rolls. Reminds me of my grandmother. She used to serve dinner rolls in a tray that looked like that. <laughs> oh, a little bunt pan. Those are cute for mini bunt cakes. 
Hmm, I don't really see, well, what is this? This is super interesting. Is that just a big coffee pot? I don't know what that is. You know what this is? Oh, this looks like an ice bucket because it's insulated inside. What a weird ice bucket. Isn't that funny? That would certainly be a conversation piece. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't think that's my look, but pretty cool. And then look how cute this is. A little silver plated teapot. I don't need that either. Um, all right, I think I am gonna go back and get the glasses. All right, so I got all of this stuff for $34, which probably would've cost me $34 for just one of these vases if I went to a store. And my idea is to put branches and leaves in the vases. And because I live in LA, I don't have many leaves that change to pick from. <laughs> so I do have this one little tree. Um, it's like a bush, really, that does change its leaves, and maybe this would work. I don't know. Let's see. See, normally, this little bush here has leaves that change, and they're pretty, but I don't really have any this year. I think we just had a huge rainstorm, and they're all on the ground now. <laughs> so that's not really going to work, is it? Ah, look at my garden. It's such a mess, you guys, between the rain, the drought, being in France this summer, I didn't do anything. So now it's just a big hot mess. Okay, one last minute thought before I clean this all up, because of course I'm having a brunch this weekend, so I have to clean this up. I can't leave this like this. Plus it could rain. Um, what if I stagger the tables again? Like I did for my husband's party. That maybe gives us more space. It doesn't look as nice now because I don't have the cloths or the chairs, but I could just stagger one going this way and one going that way. But I don't know. I like when everybody's together. I just think it's more fun. Um, you know who's totally going to have an opinion? I'm going to call him right now. My dad. <laughs> He'll know what to do. <laughs> do you ever notice that your parents will call you three to four times a day, but then that one moment that you need to reach them, they're nowhere to be found? <laughs> All right. Well, dad's not answering, so I guess he doesn't get a vote. So I'm going to ask <laughs> another very opinionated creative type. <laughs> Philippe. Right, so what do you think if you have the choice of the tables looking like this or one big happy family? One big happy family. <laughs> terrible. It's terrible. Okay, all right, we're going with one big happy family. Okay, now it's time for my annual grab coffee with dad at the grocery store event because we are looking for the tabletop decorations. And he keeps telling me that his grocery store has these really beautiful green gourds. So I'm looking for those. So let's see if we get lucky. Oh, here are some nice acorn squash, butternut squash. Ooh, look at that, that's really pretty. I don't know if this is what he was talking about. Maybe. We'll just have to go in and ask Hi. him. Hi, good morning. <laughs> How are you, oh, hon? Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> it's a little present. Thanks for the coffee, but what is in here? I was afraid to open the bag because my dad has a very big sweet tooth and I was afraid it was some kind of huge cinnamon bun waiting for me. <laughs> but no, look at how cute these are. My dad knows that every Christmas we have this tradition in our family where we give ornaments based on something that's happened throughout the year. And this year I tried my first canned sardine in San Gilles Croix de Ville. <laughs> and if you didn't see that video, I'll link to it below and you can see. But this will totally remind me of that. Thanks, Dad. And then there's another one in here. I love how Thanksgiving and Christmas are starting to just blend together now. <laughs> what is this? Oh, the Vitamix. <laughs> because this Thank is one you. of my favorite blenders. Yes, and I gave one to my parents last Christmas. Yeah, yeah last Christmas. And they love it. They're obsessed. So they gave me this. <laughs> Thank you. I love it. Okay, after the coffee, it was time to go back outside and see what types of squash we could use. Apparently the gourds have been sold out. <laughs> so we'll see if we can make do with what's here. And this was all in an effort to sort of fall up my summer tablecloth. Great. Oh, and these, the green and maybe the little the little baby pumpkins. Yeah, these are fabulous. Yeah. All right, so we are gonna take these kabucha squash. We have to put them on the table, but then we can also make a soup with it the day after Thanksgiving, because now we have a yeah. lunch here. I think it's good to have one more shape, mm -hmm. right? Let's see. Okay. Like that. Right? I think that's good. I think that's enough. Perfect. <laughs> 
Okay, now normally I do most of my big shopping at Trader Joe's for the holidays, but because I was in the nice fancy grocery store, there were a few things I needed to pick up that I can't get there. Like Reynolds Wrap, heavy duty for the turkey, some fancy dish soap. Uh, when I'm doing a lot of dishes, I really treat myself, and I love this stuff by Myers yes. Lavender Scent. It's so good. A couple of sponges, always need some of those. Dishwashing liquid, I think it pays to buy the better brands. It just works a lot better. And a big thing of paper towels. So now that I have all of that, I wanted to go to the cheese aisle because <laughs> I find that they have the better crackers. And then my dad totally inspired me about the Christmas ornaments and I found two that I picked up for my family <laughs> while I was there. So my littlest daughter is getting really into hot chocolate these days, getting ready for Christmas. So I thought that would be a fun one for her. And then for my husband who always drinks almond milk in his coffee every morning, I thought that would be kind of funny. <laughs> they were so cute. <laughs> Okay, once I got to the cheese department, I just wanted to get some of these fancier crackers. Look how great these are. <laughs> just one or two boxes, I think, makes a big difference on the cheese board. Some of these rosemary crackers are also good. Okay. And then they also have a great selection of jams, like the sour cherry jam and a little bit of fig jam. I just think that those things are really great on a cheese board. But for a little bit of heat, I really wanted to find the pepper jelly and they had a very nice selection. So I got myself a little jar of that, which is great paired with goat cheese. Now for the very important part of planning the menu. So I really wanna think this through because I don't want anybody to think that I'm like phoning it in this year. <laughs> but I do need to make it a little bit easier because the week leading up to Thanksgiving, I'm also testing a bunch of recipes for the book. So it's gonna be a lot of cooking because I have deadlines to hit. So every month I have to submit at least 12 to 13 recipes. And I like to test them at least three, four, sometimes five times just to make sure it's all perfect for you guys. <laughs> so it does take some time. That's why we're gonna choose very wisely. Number one, we have to have the turkey, right? I am using my mom's foolproof turkey recipe. It's the one that I use every year. It was in my Kin Community Thanksgiving for Rookies episode way back when. Now, if you guys want this very spiffy little PDF, that has all of my recipes from that episode. When you sign up for my newsletter, the link is in the description, you will get this spiffy PDF. So it has dad's gravy, the vegetarian stuffing, the candy jams. So I'm definitely also making these candy jams. These are mom's recipe too. Now, I don't know if it's like this at your house, but when you have a few generations represented at Thanksgiving, you end up having multi-generational recipes that people wanna see on the table or they do get their feelings hurt and they get upset. So for us right now, we have four of these recipes that have to be on the table and that is the candy jams from mom. So that's really something from my childhood. It's something that was very popular in her family. So not only is it something special from my childhood, but it's probably something special from her childhood too. And this is what holidays are all about. It's really paying tribute to all of the holidays we've had up into our life at the point we're at. So it's nice to have that through line of these very special recipes. So candy jams, gotta have them. The other one that's very special is for my dad, which is his side of the family that used to make the Italian sausage mashed potato bake. That one is a classic. I gotta have that. Then I think what ends up happening is then you have your own family and your own children and you start your own traditions. And my husband has never been a big fan of Thanksgiving. I don't know. It's like his French side. He doesn't really understand like the tradition of the sweet and the salty. The fact that we mix like cranberry confiture, as he'll say, the jelly, the jam with turkey or the marshmallows and the sweet potatoes. And just I find that's the most fun of Thanksgiving is all that mixing between the sweet and the salty. So one year I said, okay, fine. I'm gonna make something for you that you are going to love. You're gonna get excited about. And then that way you'll look forward to Thanksgiving. <laughs> and that was his favorite, which is gratin dauphinois. It's a delicious potato bake with sliced, very thin potatoes with bechamel cream sauce, gruyere cheese on top. You bake the whole thing and it is the most delicious thing. Okay, uh, that is a lot of carbs that we have here, but I do need to squeeze one more in. It is the combination of a carb and a vegetable. It's a carby vegetable, my corn pudding. This recipe is so delicious. It is really something that has gone viral on Instagram. I don't know why. It's now at 1.4 million views, a little reel that I did. I didn't realize people were that excited about corn pudding. It's so easy. And the whole thing just goes in a blender. You whirl it all up. You put it in your casserole dish. And then the next day, all you have to do is put it in the oven and bake. So definitely got to make the corn pudding. Last year, I spent a lot of time making salads for Thanksgiving. I did this really fabulous harvest salad with a honey balsamic vinaigrette, which is really delicious. I also did this roasted butternut squash salad with kale and quinoa, which is a really great vegan side if you need that. 
and then I did the broccoli salad. I think this year I'm keeping it simple and I'm just going for this one. The shaved Brussels sprout salad. It's the easiest one of the bunch and you can prep all of these Brussels sprouts the day ahead. And then all you have to do right before you serve it is toss it with the really delicious walnuts, the apples, and little pomegranate seeds. It's quite good. I think it's a really great fresh salad that represents the Brussels sprouts that I think everybody kind of wants to see represented, but it's a lot easier and quicker than having to roast them and time it all out with the other sides that you're trying to heat up. I think that's the other secret to Thanksgiving is to have at least two side dishes, maybe three, that don't take the oven. And I think vegetables play a great role in that respect. And then the only thing left to add would be the cranberry sauce and the gravy, so that's easy. And then for a bread. So now that I'm doing the corn pudding, I kind of don't want to do cornbread on top of that, even though my teenage daughter loves it. But funny enough, she's hosting her own Friendsgiving with a bunch of friends. <laughs> she's 17 and I'm so proud of her that they've all decided to get together and they're all gonna cook and bake things. She's bringing the cornbread, so off she goes. So maybe that will satisfy her with the cornbread. So then instead for my bread, I think I need to bring back the sweet potato biscuits. I did those a few years ago and people are still talking about them. They're so delicious <laughs> and they're easy because you can bake them off in the morning and then all you have to do is just reheat them. So they don't actually have to be done right at the moment. Okay, let's talk about dessert. Normally I would make anywhere from four to five desserts for Thanksgiving. I know it's crazy, but I just keep going. <laughs> just, I don't know, it's my favorite holiday. But this year is just a little crazy. So I think what I'm going to do is have everybody bring a dessert. People keep asking me what they could bring and I tried it out on a few guests and they're like, oh sure, I'd be happy to bring a dessert. So rather than four to five, I'm just gonna make one. <laughs> you may remember I made this years ago. It's like a brownie pie with ice cream on top. I made it as a summer dessert and it was really super delicious. It was actually a sponsored video by Diamond. They make these really amazing walnut pie crusts, which are so great. And they're super easy because all you have to do is pour the brownie batter into the pie crust and then it is done. So I saw those last night at the grocery store and I thought, oh, this will be really easy. I'm not gonna do the full Sunday part of it. I'm just gonna be making the brownie pie. I'm going to slice it, dust it with a little cocoa powder and then put a walnut in the center. And I thought that would look really pretty with the nut crust. And then for appetizers, I usually do hot hors d'oeuvres, but I'm not gonna do that this year. I'm gonna do just a really beautiful cheese board. And in my reveal video, which will come up next week, <laughs> I'll show you how to put that together. Right, George? For all of those who want an update on George, he is doing great. Look at him. He's exhausted with all this activity. He's my constant companion. He Jeez. is in so much better shape. He's walking like a champ, even though he's sleeping now and probably does not want to be disturbed. All right, Georgie, we'll put you back to your nap. But he's really doing great. I mean, it was a serious miracle that this dog even walked again. So we just call him the little miracle buddy. Right, Georgie? Every time I've been walking out here and I see these tables separated, I just keep thinking maybe it would be better to have them separated rather than one big, long, happy family. I don't know. I think there's something to be said about having intimate conversations with people, and that can sometimes be done better in little groupings. Um, and also, it's just so much easier to walk around these tables. I'm sort of afraid if I smush them all together, how tight that will be. So I don't know. I think you guys should let me know. I have a week to figure this out. So leave me a comment below and let me know what you think. One big, happy family or two separate tables? You'll have to tune in next week to see what I decide. All right, you guys, I hope you're doing okay with all of your Thanksgiving prep. Let me know in the comments if there's anything I can help with. If you need any recommendations for recipes, I got a ton of them for you. All right, I'll see you next time. Bye. Happy Thanksgiving.